doesn't look like how the world is going to do that Christ is alive, but he is alive. Hallelujah. And we are glad this morning. Praise the Lord. I want to thank, praise the Lord, the destiny, Pastor Paul, Lady Cheryl, for this great privilege. Praise the Lord to come and to able to be an encouragement. Hallelujah to the destiny family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd rather be here than any place else. Praise the Lord. There's so many places that we can go in the world, but I'd rather be in the house of God than any other place. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we just want to honor God, and I'm going to just give my wife that opportunity. Praise the Lord. I tell her I'm going to let her sing. I don't know what she has on her heart, but praise the Lord as she comes. Before I get going, praise the Lord. She will sing what is on her, on her heart. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. The God of all gods. Amen. Hallelujah. The creator of heaven and earth. Amen. The God that spake and it was done, commanded and it stood fast. Glory to God. The God that no yes. one can challenge. Hallelujah. I give him the glory. I give yes. him the praise. Yes. I give him the honor despite yes. all try. I give God the praise. The fact that I rise up this morning and I can breathe, I give him the praise. Hallelujah. The devil did not take me out. I give God the praise. He is worthy. Hallelujah. In the face of the devil, I give my God praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just going to sing you this hymn, a well-known hymn. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Amen. And that's my desire, my determination Amen. to be standing, to be sitting, to be crawling, lying, whatever, Amen. near the cross. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus, keep yeah. me the cross thank you jesus there's a precious fountain praise the lord free to all a healing stream yes god flows Hallelujah. from calvary In the cross. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So we want to thank God for Lady Barbara in that song, but I just want to honor God and thank him and praise him again to be here, as I said, and truly my heart is a little, not sad, but to miss two great people, praise the Lord, out of the sanctuary this morning. I know there may be many that may be missing, but I'm, I'm referring to praise the Lord, oh, Reverend Sandra, you know, Deacon Sam, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, at midnight, they will come on. <laughs> at midnight, praise the Lord, because we have midnight prayer every hour, praise the Lord. And many a times that they are there, praise the Lord. So this way we are holding them up in our prayer, praise the Lord. The warriors are praying for them. So hallelujah, Reverend Sandra and Deacon Sam, we know you're online in YouTube as we greet all the YouTube troopers this morning, that God will truly restore, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We have the Mackenzie right there, hallelujah, also <laughs> comes on, all of those help push the warriors, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and many others from the destiny who comes on, hallelujah, Lady Cheryl, praise the Lord, and they push the warriors. So we are glad and we are thankful this morning that we, glory to God, are God's people. There is only one heaven, one heaven, hallelujah. We know how the world is going to be. Many believe that they are different, but we know there is only one. We're not, I mean, one place that we all are going to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And there's no division there. So we are glad this morning. Praise the name of the Lord for all of those who are standing up in this last and closing days for the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm just going to begin just now, but you know, the enemy have been working last week. I got up Monday and all of a sudden I had a toothache out of this world. And the next thing, and the, uh, my, my dentist doesn't know until Wednesday, so they start on a Monday, so you can imagine the pain that I was in. And then all of a sudden, my jaw was all the way out here. Yes. And then I, I, I've gone to the dentist, and he looked at it, he said, oh, no, you're going to need a root canal. So co moving from him the next day to a root canal, and still the jaw was so swollen. Hallelujah. But thank God, and on top of that, I was chopping on the chopping board, and still the knife chopped what I was chopping, it chopped my finger. I mean, bleed really bad, really bad. As simple as it looked there, hallelujah, the knife went a good ways down into that finger. Praise the Lord. But that's all that the enemy will try this morning. But I just want to say before I begin, a real soldiers, and I want you to mark it down. A real soldiers, if you look on a real soldier, he have to have bruises and cuts on him. If you say someone who said I'm a soldier, but their skin is smooth, hallelujah, like a baby, something is wrong with that soldier. Real soldiers carry bruises and cuts, hallelujah. And those bruises and cuts do not bring them down. It makes them stronger and stronger give them determination to go forward in the things that they want to do. That's a real soldier. Glory to God. So when you find something you are bruised, don't feel battered. Don't feel hurt. Hallelujah said glory to God for the glory of God. I intend to, I am determined 
determined to go forward for the glory of God. So keep that in mind. Real soldiers, hallelujah, hallelujah, has bruises and bunk and, 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 and cuts. This morning, this, this afternoon, hopefully not to be too long, my topic this afternoon is turning back the battle at the gate. Turning back the battle at the gate. And I'm going to read out of the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. Hallelujah. In that day the Lord of hosts shall become a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. Verse 6. And a spirit of justice to him who sit in judgment and administers, and administers the law and the strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Glory to God. Eternal God and most heavenly Father, we have come to your word and it's already blessed. Your word is already blessed, dear God. It need no introduction, glory to God. So as we come, God, to looking into your words this morning, may the words, oh God, inspire us. May your word give us strength. Hallelujah, dear God. May your word take us to another level in you, God, in the name of Jesus, especially for the times that we are in, God, where your word has been challenged on every level. The word of God has been challenged, dear God. But at the end of the day, your word will be still standing. And every challenge will befall in the name of Jesus Christ because your word is yourself. And there's nothing, hallelujah, that can stop your word. Hallelujah, glory to God. God has spoken and so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no one can override your word in the name of Jesus Christ as we come to it this morning. We see people go to a cash register and if that cashier make a mistake, some administrator come and he put into a key and he override whatever have gone on there. But the word of God shall never ever be override in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turning back the battle at the gate. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Gates means everything. Hallelujah. Gates symbolize the entrance, as we know, of a city of forest, hallelujah, in ancient time, city gates were crucial for defense and security, hallelujah. So gates, we put them up, glory to God, hallelujah, even at our very homes, hallelujah, we put them up there for some kind of protection, hallelujah. And what we realize, hallelujah, in, 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 in times gone by, and even today, battles in the Old Testament, it always comes to the gates, hallelujah. And at the gates, the battle is either won or lost. Hallelujah. There's no maybes. There's no two ways about it. Glory to God. And we know from history many storms came. Now we, we could we could take for example as we look at this this morning. Look at look at the White House. The gates they put up around January the 6th, right? The gates was not strong enough. And those who were at the gate were not strong enough to hold back those crowd who stormed the gates. They just knocked them over, and then what we have? We have all kind of, of chaos, hallelujah, nearly even causing the life of many of the Congress people because that the gates were not man managed properly, properly, hallelujah. So gates, turning back the enemy at the gates is very important. We know from what is going on right now in Israel and in the Palestine, somebody was not managing the gates. They were left open. And what happened? 
Those gorillas, Hamas, whatever we call them, they had a free entrance into the city. And what, ha what happened at the ending of that chaos? Lives were lost. Many young people lost their life. Many parents will not grow up to know what those children will be like because they have all lost their life there because somebody was not watching at the gate. Hallelujah. We no one should leave any gate unmannered. The enemy will go through it. Let me, let me use one illustration with, with my son. I have a dog. He brings him over to the house. So they have a gate that you put up. But if he stepped into the house and they didn't put that gate up there, he feel an entrance where he just scoop up the stairs, running all over the place. Because why? There's no gate there. When there's a gate there, there's cautions. He knows he's not going to able to get through the gate. So he is going to take his place. He's going to stay in his place. But once he sees that there's an opening, he will run through it. Hallelujah. So, as we build on what I want to get to this afternoon, we see in the school shooting, the last one that happened there in Texas, somebody said that the, the door was left propped open. All right? Then when they go back over, the teacher said, no, but yes, I had propped open that gate, but afterwards, after I got what I want, I closed back, I removed the rock, and the gate came in. But what happened there? The door was not closed. She expected it to happen automatically. So there comes the man, say a gate, and he got gone through that gate, and we know what happened next. Many of those children and teachers lost their life because that there were nothing, glory to God, glory to God, there to protect. No one was there to protect protect the gates. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now Psalms 127 says something. As arrows is in the hand of a mighty warrior, so are the children of one's use. And he said, happy is the man who has his quiller full of them. He shall not be ashamed when he speak with the enemies at the gate. Glory to God. So at the gates, of course, when you come to gates and you know that, that those standing at that gate is so strong, you're not going to be able to get through. So he will not be afraid of the stand up because that man has the soldiers. He has the manpower to drive back the enemy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! You see, when the enemy or enemies attack, the battle all often, as I said, start at the gate. The soldiers will engage and repel the attackers by driving them out. It signified, hallelujah, that they were watching, they were on guard, hallelujah, they are waiting, hallelujah, they're not going to allow these things to happen, hallelujah, and they're not going to give the enemy a free entrance. So in the natural, this is natural, praise the name of the Lord. You know, as I was in Barbados the other day, well, I was waiting, <laughs> I run to get something, and once I got back there, the lady said, well, we're going to have to go through your suitcase and all of this, and they start to do all of this thing. So that was, I thought that was the end of it. So we go on through the airport, and once I heard my name over the, 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 the speaker, and I said, well, you got to get to gate, gate 15, and I'm saying, well, why are they calling my name? <laughs> so what I gone up, and as I gone up there, you know, they said, well, we got to scan you. We got to scan you. Hallelujah. We have to scan you. What you're saying, you're not going to get through the gates like that. We got to give you permission to get through these gates. Hallelujah. So they've gone up and I said, well, I don't know. What is it? And of course, Bob said, well, what is going on? Well, he was, this thing happened back there. They already done it. The guy said, no. So they scanned, they put this thing on your hands and your, your feet, and they, and they did all of this. They want to go through your iPad, they take off the cover. What I'm saying is that they will not allow you to go through the gate because there's protection there. They've got to be sure that you are right before they let you through their gates. 
So think of that. This, this, this there. And there's something I want to read. Hallelujah. As I get deeper into what I really want to say this afternoon. When we go into Revelation chapter 10 verses, sorry, 21, 10 through 13. It talks about 12 gates, correct? But notice at the 12 gates in the new Jerusalem. Here's what it said. Let me just read it. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from, from, from heaven by God. Having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, like clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. Hallelujah. And on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. And on the east gate, they had three, and on the north, south, east, and west. Now, when I, when I read that, I said, why will the gates, why will the new Jerusalem that is coming down need gates? You ever think of it? And not just that they need gates, but who is managing the gates? The angels. And there probably a reason why for the angels. Because if the, the, the time may not be right, even at the new Jerusalem come down, because Satan may want to still storm the gates. And man may not be enough to stop him. So the angels are guarding every gateway. And I said, I said, look at that. Glory to God. It's not the temple. It's Jerusalem. It's on the border. Hallelujah. Where you come to enter Jerusalem. Hallelujah. It's like when we look at the United States today, along the Mexico border, they have so many long, um, I don't know what you call them, gates or whatever. But people are still getting through those gates. People are still looking for a loophole. Hallelujah, hallelujah to come true. But in the gates, the angels are watching the gates. Hallelujah. And guess what? This is where battles start. So we are going to look this morning and we are going to move a spiritual application of turning back the battle at the gates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, how do we turn back? When we do a spiritual application to this, the battle at the gate. One, we must put, hallelujah, our best spiritual resources to fight at the gate. Now, what we battle at the gate? What do we battle at the gate? Hallelujah. We battle sickness issues. Sickness is a battle. Hallelujah. It comes to our gate. It comes to our gate. Hallelujah. Mental issues. It comes to the gates. Family issues. It comes to our gates. Husband and wife issues. It comes to the gate. Mm. Spiritual issues. It comes to our gates. And financial issues. They have come to the gate. When these come to our gate, how do we turn them back? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, glory to God. We have gates. We have gates. We have a gates to our hearts. We got gates to the mind. We got gifts to the ears. We got gifts to the mouth. We got gifts to the soul. We got gifts to our eyes. We got um, gifts to our hearts. All of these are the entry points to our life. Glory to God. And when the battle comes to the gate, we need something. Hallelujah. Thinking about it will not change it. Hallelujah. We can be feeling down when the battle comes. When it is a battle of sickness, glory to God. Hallelujah. Like I said earlier in 
the name of Jesus, if it's a mental issue, if it's a family issue, glory to God, there's a husband and wife issue, glory to God, spiritual issue, financial issue. These things are going to come to our gates at some point in time. Because the devil business is to come to the gates. He's going to want to know how good we manage our gates. You see, <laughs> sometimes a young lady, if she doesn't get her the gates to her heart, you will find a young man come and he find a gate that he can easily walk through. And he will say, but nobody is managing the gate. And it makes an entrance way into that young lady's life. And most of the time, many of those come to just bring destruction. More than lifting up more than really, really coming, hallelujah, to help the person. So the battle is at the gates. How do we, hallelujah, defend our gates? Hallelujah. Many don't know that we have gates as children of God. This is a war. This is a battle. Glory to God. And we got to know when the enemy brings something at the gate, not only he brings it at the gate, can he can be very forceful with it. Let me use one example. We were in Barbados two weeks ago. We went there for our brother Junior Lovell funeral. His wife is six as past two, you know, Lady Cheryl. If we were not there, the wife would have been gone in another day. <laughs> because the devil brought death at her gate. But we already know that we know that we know that we know. And we say, no, it can't happen. We drive that demon back from where she came. You hear this? Why is one of the daughters, she screamed, she passed out. You see, you can't pass out when the devil is knocking at you again. You got to face him eye to eye, toe to toe, nose to nose, eye to eye, mouth to mouth. Glory to God. He got to back down. You see, in the days, there were people who were said, I'm a bad man. But when he meets somebody, this is not good English, one worse than him, I don't want to say bad, huh? but one worse than him. Watch how he does. He come into your face, right into your face. Even want to touch your nose. And if you're so bad, you see, you start trembling up. Because a greater one has come. We are talking about the enemy, turning back the enemy at the gate. Because they are turning back in storms of our gates. He said, you got to open this gate. You got to let go. All kind of issues he brings to the gates. All type of thing. And we are not just talking the world. We are talking Christians. We are talking about how they turn back the enemy at the gates. Isaiah was saying. They had the soldiers. They had the right people in place. It was not a free entrance for the enemy to step in. But I noticed in this last and closing days, Satan is bringing many things to our gates. Remember what we says, we got ear gates. We got eye gates. We got mouth gates. We got heart gates. Hallelujah. And the enemy just think he can walk through any of those gates. 
I just said there were 12 gates in the New Jerusalem. And there's 12 angels managing the gift. The Bible then said there was a man. They said there was angels managing those 12 gates. So the devil business in this last day is the bombard of a gate. You think because he brings sickness, we're going to cripple up? We're just going to get fear? We're just going to stop praying? We're going to start getting emotional because that when he throw cancer at your gate? Because when he throw sickness, glory to God, when he begins to throw financial issues at your gate? Hallelujah. And so what you're going to do now? All these bills are there. They are pulling up. They are pulling up. And you're saying, mm -mm -mm. you begin to cry. No, you turn it back because God is greater. God is greater. Let me tell you, everything the devil brings, God got an answer. Turn it back upon his head. You see, God of the days when we are so, so quiet, we're so loving. Not that I stop on loving. You know, we're so caring. We're so loving. Oh, the seers will not see this. And we think, no, we got to be radical. We got to be warriors. We got to fight for every cause of Christ. Those days are gone. They have taken advantage of the church long enough. And this is the church's time. This is the church's time. There's a, war, a man once signed testify said, they, they, when I became a soldier, they told me two things. They gave me a rifle, and they sent me over there, and they said two things for you. You either, be, you either kill, or you going to be killed. So what is he going to do in that moment? His job is to kill and not be killed. No devil in hell is going to kill a child of God. We realize that the church is up against a battle. Hallelujah. And in this battle that we are facing, the devil believes that we are going to freeze up. We are just going to cry and mourn. Hallelujah. Why he beat us over our heads. Why he take, take, take charge of our gates. Why he storm our gates. The battle is either won or lost at the gate. Minister Fursi. Hallelujah, Jackie. Hallelujah. The battle is either win or lost at the gates. There is no two wins. There's no two wins about it. It's got to be in the bottom line. God give us everything it takes to win this battle. Glory to God. What will it take this afternoon, Destiny, to win this battle? One, it takes warfare prayer. Two, it takes the word of God. Three, it takes the blood of Jesus Christ. Four, it takes faith in Christ. And six, it takes praises unto God. There may be more. But I give you six things that will turn the devil back at the gate. And we're not just talking about prayer. We got to do warfare prayer. Because we are dealing with some demons in our town. Some wicked demons. 
whether or not we want to hear about demons that not not us destiny but ready the church of Jesus Christ want to believe that they are demons you could believe it or not but they are real and not only that they are real they are real yesterday they are in the earth today and they come with a mission <laughs> They come with a mission, and their mission is to destroy. That's their only mission on earth. Glory to God. And that's why Jesus Christ said, hallelujah, behold, I give you power to tread on the scorpions. Luke 10, 19, and all. The, the serpents, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 This is where we are at. This is what is going to take to turn back the enemy at the gate. Proverbs 14, 19 said, Evil doors will bow down in the presence of God and the wicked at the gate of the righteous. That's what the wise man Solomon said in the name of Jesus Christ. While we are battling at the gates and turning by the enemy, sometimes it's not only us and an individual, it's our families. It is the church, it's our congregation, it is our pastors, it is our ministers, it is our evangelists, it is our prophets, it is our apostle, it's the sister, it's the brother that's sitting next to you, who you said, I am going to stand in the gap, and I'm going to turn this devil back. Too long. Have we given the enemy free entrance? We open the gate wide. He comes in. And he ain't coming with anything good. He come in to steal, kill, or destroy. Those three things he's coming through the gates to do. Hallelujah. And Pastor said it so right this morning. The devil knows. He lose. You see, when we can stand up to the devil in the name of Jesus Christ, he backs down. He got to back down. He got to back down at the name of Jesus Christ. And I say it because I could just say it. If I start taking you into some deep spiritual things, hallelujah, your head was probably here with stand up in your head. If I was afraid, if my wife was afraid, we would not be standing here. When the devil start want to storm our gates. But we said, no, you can't get through these gates. You can't overcome the power of Jesus Christ. You can't overcome the Christ in us. You cannot get through. I don't care where you come, what part of the world you work from. You cannot get through the gates so that Jesus Christ given unto us. Seeds of God. Seeds of God. This morning, the battle at the gates represents the ongoing struggle between good and evil, holy and unholy. Hmm, Jesus help us this morning. Hey, Holy Ghost! Hey! Jesus this morning. Jesus! Hallelujah, 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 It represents truth and fullness, falsehood, righteousness, and wickedness. These are the ongoing 
struggle. But most of all, good and evil, unholy and holy. You see, the devil will tell you, there ain't nothing holy. There ain't nothing holy. There ain't nothing holy. Ah, find me somebody that is holy. Show me somebody that is holy. <laughs> Show me somebody. Point them out to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why the Bible said, my sister, and they overcame him Amen. by the blood of the Lamb. That was the first thing they used. The blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's why the Bible said, the accuser of the brethren had been cast down. Shine forth as the light. I said, if you want to see holy, you see Christ. People look on the outer appearance. They judge you from afar. They judge you. Don't know anything about you. Hallelujah. They don't know you. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something. I learned to subject myself, Pastor, to a little child. If we see a little child in there, and God is using that child, I humble myself. I don't look at the child for his age. I don't look upon that child because it is a child. What I look upon, God himself can visit that child and anoint that child and use that child. So we are in a time that we got to stand up. This is where the struggle is. At the gates, believers, we have already won. We have already overcome. Not that we are trying to overcome. You see, it is the world (laughs) that is trying to overcome the church. It is the world that is trying to overcome what God says. They are beating their head against a brick. Jesus said to Saul, it is hard for you to kick against the brick. Not that we are trying to overcome. We have already overcome. For the Bible said we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that has loved us. Hallelujah, and have given himself for us on the cross of Calvary. If God is for you, I don't care who it is. They can't kill us. You see, like how they just take out the man there in Russia. But if God is for you, they're going to have to do like what they do to John the Beloved. They're going to have to put us somewhere. Because nothing they do work to destroy us. Because the power in us is greater than the power that Satan is giving to them. Whether it is true drugs, alcohol, demonic activities, the power of the Christ. You have power. Tell somebody you have power on the inside of you. You have holy power. On the inside of you, you have not even yet tapped into what is in you. Because the devil will want to keep us busy at the gates. So we won't tap into what is in us. This day demands it. You see, Jesus said, as I come into a close, something. He said, hallelujah, in Matthew 6, 18, now I say unto you, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the powers of hell or the gates of hell shall not conquer it. Even the gates of hell recognize the church. And if the hell got something in it that is not belong to it, it got to give it up. Huh? They got to give it up. Hallelujah. They got to.
to give up what is not belong to it. Not that we pray somebody want to go there. For Jesus went down there. And he led captivity captives. He loosed those that who were not supposed to be there. And he brought them up with him. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it don't matter what it is this morning. Our job is to turn the devil back our gate. Do not. In the word of caution, allow the enemy through our gates. They are wrecked lives. The devil will wreck lives. He will destroy families. He will destroy husbands. He will destroy wives. He will destroy finances. Glory to God. He will destroy anything that belongs to any child of God. But God give us the weapons to turn him back this morning. Glory to God. And finally, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Finally, the call to turn back. The call this morning to turn back, this afternoon, the battle at the gate encourages us to stand firm against the evil. Resist temptation and protect our inner self from harmful influences. Glory to God. And Peter 5, 8, 9, he said, Be alert and have a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, and Peter didn't fear to call him the devil, prowls around like a royal lion, seeking for someone to devour. He said, resist him. Stand firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Glory to God. Turning back the battle at the gates will take the supernatural. It will take warring angels. It will take courage. It will take persistence and holding on to God on changing hands. This is where we are going to win. win. This is how we're going to win at the gates and turn back the evil one in the name of Jesus. Finally, my final words, notice what is happening in this, in this, in this, in this hour. Many believers' gates are being stormed. We've seen it. Scandals to the church. Scandals to leaders, why? Because when Satan come to the gate, hallelujah, you left that gate open, hallelujah. And what happened? The social media could tell us what happened. Social media could tell you, this thing is all over the nations. Why? Because the gates were not properly managed. And to turn back the battle at the gate. God wants us to watch, protect our gates in this hour if we are going to stand. Because sometimes the enemy said, I'm not going to just come and push it slightly. I'm going to storm it. Yes. <laughs> I am going to storm it. But even though he storms the gate, the gates are protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. They are protected by the angels. They are protected by the Holy Spirit. They are protected by the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. So it don't matter how he comes, the Spirit of the Lord will take a stand against him. Be encouraged this afternoon destiny. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It's a battle. It's a battle. I can help you fight, but you have a job also to fight. The pastor or the first lady can help you fight, but we have to fight for ourselves. We got to fight 
for ourselves. And at least, even if you get beat up somewhat, don't give up. Don't give up. The time there's a mark of a soldier, someone else is praying you true. Someone else is seeing you true. Glory to God. And God and your friend, that one is up you for drive back. Drive back the forces. Drive back whatever the enemy is saying. You will rise again and stand on your own two feet and then able to lift another up who are going through this battle. So the battle has come to our gates this afternoon. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to fight? I just give all those examples how we are going to fight and defeat the enemy at the gate as you stand. Even while I am here at the past to come, I can find many gates have been bombarded. Some is shaking. Some is already have a crack. And Satan is trying, you know when you're trying to force you a, 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 a simple faith, sometimes people get stuck. But he's trying. Your gears have been battered for a while by all sorts of things as I've named so many. But God is on your side. Jesus is on your side. The Holy Spirit is on your side. And the word of God. Pastor, pray for those. There are many gates that have been stormed, but the devil will not win. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will not win. I said he will not win. Jesus Christ win this morning. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These are critical moments. We've got the word. We've got to stop, turn back the battle at the gate. Now I'm going to pray. We, we're going to pray. You are going through a situation in your health. You're battling Satan with your health. Come to the altar. You're battling Satan today in a matter of your finances come to the altar you're battling Satan today he's battling you in the area of relationships husband wife parent children landlord tenant boss employee come to the altar you're battling Satan you're battling Satan spiritually in your spiritual walk you are constantly being defeated Listen, God did not save you to be defeated. Look at me. God did not save you for you to be defeated. For Peter said that you are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you, not in your own strength, but through the strength of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then we heard what we need to do. We need to pray. Sometimes I'm up praying 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't advertise it. But the Lord wakes me up this morning. The Lord woke me up at 2.30. And I was up from 2.30 up until 4 o'clock this morning. We need to use the Word of God. Stand on the Word of God. We need to use the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to exercise our faith. Listen, I'm believing God this evening, this afternoon, that when we finish praying about these situations, that you're going to leave here with the confidence that your gates are secured. Reverend Evelyn, you said some things today that are powerful. We have been playing with Satan and his imps for too long. We want to psychologize my own word, psychologize the spiritual attacks of Satan, the warfare that we need to be engaged in. We want to mamby pamby Satan. Come young man, come. Josh, Jonathan, come. 
Come. Come. Everyone needs to be at the altar today. When we look around us, listen, and we see what the enemy is doing to this great nation. Look at the United States of America today. Look at the state that we're in. We are one step away from civil war. One step away from civil war. And we're just going along. I just went outside and I told uh, our brother Grantley, as I look at the congregation from the back via the cameras, I said, brother, where are the people? People rather sit home and watch television than come into the house of God and worship God in spirit and in truth. Not that we have a problem with those who cannot come out or those who are not in the area to come and worship with us or to go to church, but people rather sit home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let us join in prayer. Let us join in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the mighty, matchless name of your holy child, Jesus Christ. We come recognizing dear God that we cannot do this work without you. We cannot live this life victoriously without you. We cannot overcome Satan without you. But Lord, we know that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. We know that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthened us. So Lord, right now, Lord, we declare healing, healing over your people in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare deliverance over habitual sin for your people right now. We plead your blood upon the doors of our lives. We plead your blood upon the doors of our children's lives. We plead your blood upon the doors of our families, of our marriages. We plead your blood upon the doors of our home. For we declare today that no demon, no evil, no powers of darkness can overcome that which God has committed, we have committed unto God. We cover our finances in the blood of Jesus Christ. Someone's mortgage, someone's home is in trouble, someone's apartment is about to be retaken, but we cover our home in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, we command you to take up your weapons and flee. Take up the spirit of poverty. Take up the spirit of need in the name of Jesus Christ and flee right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, for that one who is due a promotion on the job, but it has been withheld because there have been spiritual attacks. There's been spiritual warfare on the job. They're being accused wrongfully. They're looking at you with a side eye because they see your credentials. They see your diligence. They see your commitment. But they're looking at you with a side eye. But in the name of Jesus Christ right now, we bind the works of Satan and we loose that person right now. We lose that person right now. We lose that promotion right now. We lose that raise right now. We lose that job right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that the fire of the Holy Ghost will cause a revival, a revival, a revival of prayer, a revival of spiritual warfare. A revival of commitment to Christ, a revival of discipleship, a revival of purpose, a revival of studying your word, a revival of obedience to your word, a revival of faith. Lord, I pray today that your people will not see their circumstance as their destination. But they will see with the eyes of faith 
they will see beyond the attacks and that we will enter into spiritual warfare. We will walk knowing that we are the king's kids. Hallelujah. We will walk knowing the end of the battle. We will walk as though we understand that he, hallelujah, who have begun a good work in us, he who has saved us by his marvelous grace, he who has washed us in the blood of Jesus Christ, he, hallelujah, who has filled us with the Holy Spirit, he, hallelujah, is able to keep, he is able to perform the work that he has begun in our lives. So Lord, I pray today for clarity for your people. I pray God for spiritual understanding. I pray God for coming for illumination in your word. I pray God for revelation and understanding that your people, oh God, will leave this house knowing that they are more than conquerors, knowing that the enemy is under their feet. And Satan, we put you on notice today. We put you on notice today. We put Satan on notice today. Satan, we come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who defeated you on the cross when he gave up his life. He defeated you on the third day when he rose triumphantly from the grave. And so, Lord, right now, by faith, I cover every individual in this in this sanctuary. I cover every household represented in this sanctuary. I cover every home that is viewing this service today. I cover everyone in the blood of Jesus Christ. We plead your blood. We plead your blood upon every husband. We plead your blood upon every wife. We plead your blood upon every child. We plead your blood upon every home. We plead your blood upon every job. We plead your blood upon every body. That death angel, right now we turn you back. Death angel, we turn you back right now. Just as the blood was on the doorpost of the Hebrews in Egypt, hallelujah, the night of the Passover, we plead your blood, the blood that covers, the blood that protects, the blood that heals right now. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this young man, Minister Ordain Roden. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon all the members of his team today in the name of Jesus. Satan, we command you to take up your weapons and flee right now. We claim victory. We claim victory. And we thank you. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for this word today, oh God. In the mighty, the matchless name of Jesus. Listen, from this day onward, you're going to walk differently. From this day onward, you're going to walk as a victor in Christ. From this day onward, you will not be one who will be falling under your circumstance, but you will be an overcomer through Christ who strengthens you. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. The the praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. You may return to your places at this time. Hallelujah. We want to receive a love offering for our brother, uh, Minister Joseph. We're not going to take long. We're not going to belabor this. If the Spirit of God moves you to give, ushers come. We're going to do this quickly, quickly, quickly.
quickly. Also, I want to let you know that we are going over to the Macedonia call to this afternoon at 2 p.m. Some delicious chicken soup has been prepared for us, amen. Unfortunately, the ones who didn't come to church will not be able to enjoy, will not be able to go with us. But those who are planning to stay on and go over to Macedonia in one hour, we have some refreshments to revive us, amen. And we're going to go over with a word of testimony. We're going to go over with the praise of God's people, amen, and we're going to minister to the people over there. But right now, the ushers are going to come and wait upon you, and we're going to bless the servant of God with whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart. Hallelujah. people Jesus said Jesus said that my kingdom is not of this world do not get caught up with what is happening in the natural realm our kingdom the kingdom that we are part of that you are a part of is not dictated for by the events of this world so God has not called you to be defeated. He's called you to be victorious. So wherever you are, I want to encourage you to walk in victory. Sister here has a big testimony. Looking forward to hearing your testimony today, sis. Amen. Derice, Derice, come, come here for a minute, Derice. Come here. This, this young lady here has a testimony out of this world. I'm mean, not going to ask you to testify now. Okay. You're going to share a little bit later on today at the Mayfair. Okay. But listen, what the enemy thought he had done with her life. Am I correct? Amen. God turned it all around. <laughs> in her personal life, listen, in her family life, in her finances, in her education. Come on, am I speaking the truth? 
God has turned, she's a living witness. Amen. And God can do this. What well, the same thing that he did. Do you believe that he can do for others? Amen. Can he do the same thing for them? Yes, he can. <laughs> Amen. So listen, if you need a miracle from the Lord, if you need vict victory from the Lord today, this is a living, living testimony of God's victory. Let's lift our hands. Don't forget, I believe the soup is already being warm. All right? The soup is already being warm. Don't leave. The service over there is going to be a good, just a half an hour service. We're going to go. We're going to hit it. And like they said, we're going to quit. Amen? Hit and quit. We need your presence to come and stand with us over the Mayfair. Let us begin on the right path this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and grant you his peace, his joy, and his victory both now and forevermore. And everyone says, we want to thank Reverend Evelyn. Come on, let's clap our hands. Give the Lord praise for Reverend Evelyn, bringing the word to bless, to inspire us, Lady Barbara, blessing us with that wonderful song. Have a rich week in the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood.